Welcome to Numerical Methods. So now I, I like to discuss the convergence result for the Monte Carlo method. So if we go back to our definition, I will consider now this object. I have a sequence of IID random variables here a sequence and I will consider now in which sense does this object here converge to the expectation and the sequence of IID random variables is actually modeling what we had here the drawing of a random variable so this sequence is yeah, modeled by this product space so we have this sequence, and if you plug in a single event into this sequence, then this can be interpreted as an X of omega i, yeah, independent drawings of the omega i. But important, yeah, we are now looking at this guy, this object, and not at this object. Okay, so convergence result, we will start with the strong law of large numbers. Yeah, so maybe this is also just the recapitulations of some result. Um, that actually tells us that we converge in some sense. So I have my sequence of IID random variable integrable real valued, yeah, so values in R, random variable over the same probability space where mu is my expectation. Yeah? They are all IID, so expectation of xi is every, all, always the same. Yeah, it's integrable, so I have an expectation. And I have that my Monte Carlo approximation. So the Monte Carlo sum one divided by n sum from i equals one to n xi. This is equal to mu. Yeah, if I take the limit n to infinity in probability, yeah, so with probability one, yeah, because the object on the left hand side is uh, the limit of a random variable is a random variable, uh, so in probability. So I have that my Monte Carlo sum converges to my expectation mu almost surely as n goes to infinity. So there are two things that I don't like yeah, because uh, I do not have an error, error estimate here. I just know that, well, I will converge if n goes to infinity, but how fast do I converge? Yeah? So that's important for me. So how fast do I, do I converge? So can I get um, also, um, a convergence rate, yeah? So that's the question which we will answer next, yeah? So this guy converges, but can we also get a convergence rate? Uh, maybe a small remark, yeah? Um, you see that you have here the expectation and you have here say something like also, like an expectation, an average, yeah, a running average. Well, if you interpret this xi here as time, yeah, you are averaging over time. And then you can interpret this that the time average is equal to, and this here, if now your omegas is the space, this is the space average, yeah. So Say, for example, there is like in a stochastic process, there is a timeline yeah? and there are omegas, different sample paths. Yeah? So you have the property here that the time average equals the space average. And this is um, theorems on this are called ergodic theorems. So we have that the time average is equal to the space average. 
Okay, but coming back now to my question, no, so now I have a convergence in a certain sense. Do I have a convergence rate? How fast do I converge? So the next thing, thing you maybe remember is, ah, okay, we have the central limit theorem. Okay, so I have a sequence again, my sequence of RID real valued random variables on the same probability. And now I have an expectation. Yeah, so my expectation, which I would like to approximate, but I also know that I have the variance. So there is a sigma squared here. Expectation xi minus mu squared. Okay, then I have that again for the limit n to infinity and also in probability. So for n to infinity, the probability of, yeah, my sum over the xi, uh, not divided by n, divided by square root of n, okay, and also divided by sigma, minus the mu, so actually now in the sum, yeah, the sum of xi minus mu. Yeah, the probability that this stays within a certain bound. So we have two bounds here, A and B. So this probability converges yeah, for, for n to infinity to phi of B minus phi of A, where phi is the standard normal distribution function. Um, so actually, you know that if you have measurement, measurements and xi is a measurement, yeah, so then the error is normal distributed. So this is the guy, yeah, or the error distribution will converge to the normal distribution. So this is um, the central limit. Uh, can, can we get some convergence rate out of this? Yeah, this expression here looks quite, quite nice. Yeah, this is that we stay within a certain bound. Maybe we just try. Okay, so the expression which we have there, so one divided by square root of n times sigma sum xi minus mu stays between a and b. Yeah, so this expression, I can maybe transform it. So I have here my one divided by square root of n, the sum xi. So I just divide with another square root of n. Then I will get a one divided by n times the sum of xi minus mu. Uh, and then I just multiply with the sigma. Then I get in front of the a and b just this factor here. So I just get sigma divided by square root of n in front of my interval bounds. And in between, I just have now my sum 1 divided by n xi, uh, sum over xi, and 1 divided by n sum over mu. But since this is always the same mu, this is just mu. Yeah. And I have indeed my difference. So the difference between my Monte Carlo approximation and the mu. So the probability that this stays between these bounds. Okay, so this is actually the same as this expression on top. And you see the nice thing is that your bounds converge with one divided by square root of n. Yeah? So if you make n larger, then uh, yeah, this interval becomes smaller and smaller. So you can just choose a given b and a. You just choose here b and a. A prescribed probability. Yeah? Yeah, with 99%, if you like, yeah, then the B and A bound is maybe quite far. But you know now, if you choose N larger and larger, yeah, the interval becomes smaller and smaller. 
yeah, this does not work. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, the central limit theorem in this form does not give us an error estimate because it considers limits n to infinity. Yeah? So I know that this result holds, but I know it only if the n be goes to infinity. Yeah? So actually this is a bit worthless, but it's already a nice indication that maybe we can get some uh, convergence. So I can get a probabilistic error estimate from the Chebyshev inequality. And we will have the same convergence rate. Yeah, we will have the convergence rate like this, one divided by square root of n. Yeah? So it's already here in this, but at this point maybe it does not yet work. So Chebyshev inequality, recall Chebyshev inequality. I have a random variable x in L2. Yeah? So I have the expectation and I also have the variance. Then we have for any epsilon greater than zero, the probability that x minus expectation of x deviates more than epsilon is smaller or equal variance of x divided by epsilon squared. Okay, I also have the proof for this. Yeah, so it's quite intuitive, at least for the case when we uh, consider an absolute continuous random variable. So we have a density. So if I have a density, then I can express the variance. I can express the variance. Uh, yeah, I just have a real valued random variable. So it's an integral from minus infinity to infinity, little x minus expectation of x squared times the density. So I have a density here, so I have times phi dx. So what I now do is I make this smaller if I cut out a part of the domain. Yeah, okay, so here's the domain minus infinity to infinity, so the whole domain. And now I cut out a part of the domain, so uh, I cut out a part. This is smaller because this stuff here is larger or equal zero. Yeah? So I'm throwing away something that is uh, larger or equal zero. So I have that there's a large or equal integrating over x minus expectation of x greater or equal epsilon of this difference times the density phi dx. Yeah, and now since I'm on the um, outside, I make it smaller if I take here the smallest value. So since I have that epsilon squared is now smaller than x minus expectation of x squared. Yeah, so I make this smaller again. Yeah, then I can move the epsilon in to the front and you see, I just integrate here the density phi dx over this domain, so over this domain on the outside yeah, of epsilon. So this is just the uh, probability yeah, measure applied to this. Yeah, the set x minus expectation of x larger or equal epsilon. Okay, so now you divide by epsilon and you have that the probability that we stay outside is less or equal variance of x divided by epsilon squared. Yeah, so that what we want to prove. You can generalize this yeah, to yeah, uh, yeah, LQ. Okay, that's not so relevant for us. For us, another step is maybe uh, more relevant that we can now apply this to our problem with the 
Monte Carlo approximation. So that result was just for a single random variable. How do I apply this now to our problem? So the idea is that you plug in for x, your 1 divided by n sum from 1 to n xi, your up Monte Carlo approximation. Yeah. So I plug this guy in. Of course, you have that expectation of x is just 1 divided by n sum 1 uh, i from 1 to n expectation of xi because expectation operator is linear. Yeah? So this is just 1 divided by n sum from uh, 1 to n mu. This is just mu. So if you plug this in, you see that you will get here the Monte Carlo sum and you will get here the expectation. So you will get the mu here. And then I have the variance of my random variables. Yeah? And while for the expectation, actually the n was canceling. Now there is an interesting effect. Yeah? Uh, actually we will get out a one divided by square root of n of this. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, we, we will get out of one divided by n of this. Square root will come by the substitution. So what do I have? So what do I have for the variance of my x? So I have that the variance of x is the variance of my Monte Carlo sum, yeah? I used now the one divided by n sum from one to n x i as my x in this equation, when this estimate. Yeah, you can move the one divided by n in front. Since it is the variance, you get a one divided by n squared, the variance of the sum of these xi's. And now these guys are independent. Yeah? So now these guys are iid. So you have that the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. So you have that this is 1 divided by n squared, the sum of the variances of xi. So the variances are all the same. Yeah. So one divided by n, the sum of the variances is just the sigma squared. Yeah. Yeah, one divided by n, the sum of the variances is just the sigma squared. So one, one divided by n will be left over. So the nice thing is that we now get on the right hand side a sigma squared divided by n epsilon squared. So we can make that smaller and smaller. Okay, so I can now prove for my Monte Carlo sum, I have a sequence of iid real valued random variables on the same probability space. Maybe I fix uh, this, this marker here. Yeah. I don't know what was the setup before. Oh, that's too, too thick. Maybe like that. Sorry. So I have my sequence xi. This is a sequence of iid real valued random variables on the same probability space. Let mu denote our expectation. Sigma squared is now my variance. And then I have that the probability that my Monte Carlo sum, one divided by n sum i from one to n xi deviates from 
my expectation by more than a given constant, say a given epsilon, this is less or equal sigma squared. So my variance divided by the constant epsilon, so epsilon squared. So if I make epsilon very small, uh, then okay, this probability gets uh, larger, but in addition, divided by n. So if I make um, the n larger, then the probability that I will lie outside will get smaller and smaller. Actually, we are often interested in not this version here. Yeah, We are interested in that we have a prescribed probability. So there's a prescribed constant, one minus delta. So we can miss yeah, the conversions with a risk yeah, identified by delta. And then I can say that the probability that my Monte Carlo sum deviates from my mu is larger or equal uh, to this given probability one minus delta. If my error bound for my error bound being uh, sigma divided by this constant delta, to the power of one half, the so square root of delta divided by square root of n. Okay, so how does this follow? Yeah. So the first part, I already proved it, follows from the Chebyshev inequality. So the first part of the estimate follows from the Chebyshev inequality by just plugging in our Monte Carlo sum as this single random variable that was in the cherry chef inequality. And note that this variance of X is then just sigma squared divided by N because the sum of independent, the sum of variances of independent random variables uh, is the sum of the variances. And the second estimate follows with this substitution Epsilon is just this constant sigma divided by square root of delta square root of n. So this is just, I do this uh, substitution. Maybe that's not all. So the first thing is you move, of course, to the complementary set. Yeah. So I would like to have that this is smaller than epsilon. So if you move to the complementary set, then this is one minus the probability. So you have a, a, a one minus the probability. Okay, so you do a plus one and then you multiply with a minus one. So this guy um, flips. So the first step is that I move actually to the uh, complementary set, the probability that we will say less epsilon is larger or equal sigma squared divided by epsilon squared times n. And then I do the substitution that epsilon should be sigma divided by square root of delta square root of n. Yeah, so if you do this, you see you have here the divided by sigma squared multiplied with an n, yeah, so the n cancels and you have a delta, yeah, so you have the delta there. Uh, and if you move to the complementary event, you have the one minus delta. Okay, and this is now a convergence result, yeah, because there's nothing with limit n goes to infinity. Yeah, so this is nice here. So I have that, I have an approximation error that actually has a convergence rate like one divided by square root of n. So I have a convergence rate, my approximation error goes to zero as one divided by square root of n. However, there is still that this holds only 
in probability and you cannot make the probability one. Yeah, If you would like to have the probability one, you should choose delta equals zero, but then this guy here becomes infinity and it tells you nothing. So there is the probability that we will miss. Yeah? And actually this probability that we will miss this estimate now corresponds a little bit here to our picture. Yeah, So you see, what you have here is that this is a Monte Carlo approximation. This is this running sum for a specific n, yeah, for n equals uh, 100. And you see that some guys are close to the true solution. Some guys are further away. So there is here around there, there is a probability distribution and the inequality tells you, okay, you are within um, a certain bound, but there is a probability that we actually are not within this certain bound. So we can miss it. Yeah, and this is maybe still the thing which uh, leaves us a bit puzzled. Yeah, um, Is this a useful method? Because recall, what we will later do is we will evaluate this object here on a fixed sample path. Yeah, So I will use one of these lines to approximate uh, the expectation. And you see that we have a convergence rate, but there's probability that we did not converge. So note that in contrast to a classical convergence rate estimate, we have an estimate that holds only with a specific probability. I will come back to this point and actually we can also uh, fix it. We need for this the uh, variance, the sigma squared, yeah, but actually you could also estimate the variance uh, numerically. Yeah. So there is an estimator for the, for the sample variance. Yeah, that was my tour to convergence result through the convergence result. Still, we are maybe left um, a bit yeah, unsatisfied because our convergence results are only in probability. Um, I will come back to this point, but my next uh, section is Monte Carlo integration. And there you will already see that there are certain aspects of the method that are very interesting. The two which I already mentioned, first, it is very simple to implement. So we will compare compared to the Simpsons rule. Um, and the second thing is that we have convergence um, in also in higher dimensions, yeah, uh, which scales linear with the dimension. So we break the curse of dimension. Yeah, that was it for today. We will do Monte Carlo integration and also some nice code sessions yeah, then in the next session and in the following one. So we will really try this method out. Yeah, and you can see uh, how it works. And we will compare it to, say, for example, also classical uh, integration rules, yeah, which we also just implement. Thanks.